Hello everyone! My name is Jennifer Stay. This is Coloring Bliss. I've got sleepy little snoring Rose back here, and I have a book in front of me. A very special brand new coloring book that just released. The Joanna Basford's Rooms of Wonder. And believe it or not, this is my very first Joanna Basford coloring book. So I'm excited to look at its quality, at the art. We're going to peruse the pages together, and I might do a little coloring just to see how my color pencils do on the paper that she has supplied for us. So let's get started by peeking inside the Rooms of Wonder. I want to interrupt Jennifer really quick and let you know who the sponsor of today's video is. And the sponsor is you! You, all of our supporters, those of you who become members, whether you're free or paid, or whether you hit that subscribe button here on YouTube, all of that support makes these videos possible so that I can purchase books like this and give you reviews and have tutorials and teach you all that you need to know for coloring. So thank you so much for all your support. Don't forget to hit that little subscribe button and the little bell icon and the like and comment, all those good things to keep the support going here at our channel. Thank you everyone. Now back to Jennifer. Now the first thing I want to do before we talk about paper quality and binding and all of that is just have fun looking at the fun and beautiful art that she has created in this book. So I'm going to thumb through the pages and as I do I'll read some of the um, information that she's given us on the back of the book um, so you can kind of get a feel for what she was going for in her brand new book. So here we go. Welcome to Rooms of Wonder, a collection of inky interiors for you to explore and bring to life. Hidden on each page, or sometimes within a double page spread, are a secret key and a door. Find the key to unlock each door and progress to the next room. Take your time as you look around. There's plenty of knickknacks and curios to catch your eye. Gaze a while into the gem room or wander around the country kitchen or see if that thing you misplaced has been handed in to the lost property office. Some rooms are wildly fantastical like the wizard's workshop or the woodland library and others might seem quite ordinary at first glance. An office or an ice cream parlor but there's always a magical twist within the inky artwork designed to charm and delight you. So without further ado, let's turn the page and step inside your next coloring adventure. So that's our thumb through of the brand new book. And I bet you're like me that there are pages that you saw that were looking really exciting and very inspiring. One of the pages that I was ex really excited about when I saw it was this one right here with the clothes. I think that one will be really fun to color some different styles and different finishes on all those different little outfits. That will be a lot of fun. Now the book is designed like I read during the thumb through so that what you're supposed to do is find the key and the little door on each coloring page. And I kind of like that idea of having hidden things that you can find. I mean her illustrations are very much that way anyway. They are so detailed that there are hidden details and, and little, um, what did she call them, curios to find in <laughs> each like page. It's kind of like a Where's Waldo yeah. with keys or something. Like yeah. That. So I'm, I, I'm really excited now. Just because this is my first Joanna Basford book doesn't mean I haven't looked at her other art and it's very much in the same style, very detailed, and lots of beautiful things to color. She also has pages in here that are set up like mandalas. Let me show you one of those. And you guys know I love coloring a good mandala. Look how cute that one oh, is. Oh, that's fun. And then she has pages like this, which I think we call wallpaper pages. That's kind of what these are called. And it's a repeating pattern that goes across the whole page. So it gives you lots of opportunities to practice your coloring. So as far as the art goes and the concept and theme of the book, I love it. I think it is so much fun and it's going to be a lot of fun to color. Having said that, I am not a huge fan of tiny little details. Um, if you are familiar with my art, you know that my art has big open spaces where you can practice and do beautiful blends, and you can get a page done within four or five hours, depending on how much detail and what art supply you're using. These are going to take a lot longer than three or four hours to color, I think, because of all the details. But if you're into that kind of design, then you're going to love this book. 
So let's now talk about the format of the book, the paper, the way it's bound, and of course the price of the book. So I'm going to compare it to one of mine so you can kind of see the difference and we'll see what you think. I'd love to have you comment below what kind of format of book do you usually look for? Now in this situation here we only had two choices on Amazon. This one right here which cost $14.40 paperback version and then we have we could have purchased a spiral bound and I gotta say I kind of regret not buying the spiral brown bound it was $23.99 so about $10 more to have it spiral bound but let me show you why I think spiral bound would have been better and if you're going to buy this book I recommend you just get spiral bound. So if you come in here like to one of those wallpaper pages, look at how difficult it is to get down into the center of this book. It's really, I mean the way it's bound, it, it just you can't open it flat. And so there's no way I could color this flower the same that I could color this flower. So that's a little discouraging to me. Um, it even says in the beginning of the book to not press it open and flat. Let me read that to you so you can see what she recommends. Okay, down here, don't try to color right into the binding or force your book to lay flat on the desk. Instead, be gentle and leave a little breathing space down the spine as you color. So I guess what you could do as a style choice on those wallpaper pages is just don't color the center. <laughs> that would be one option. Um, let's read what else she says on here. She says she prefers to color with color pencils over pens. You can blend and layer the colors to create beautiful effects. So she's, she's suggesting you use color pencils in this book. If you do use pens, check that they are suitable for the paper on the color palette test pages in the back of the book. Right here, she's given you a place to test. So that's good. She says to pop a blank sheet of paper beneath the page you are working on to catch any inky transfer and prevent indentation. Okay, now the overall size of this book, let me grab a ruler so we can see what size we're talking about get this oriented right okay so it's about 10 inches by 10 inches so it's a square format which I I don't mind I think that that's kind of fun where it will cause a problem is if you prefer to photocopy or scan in the images that you purchase and then print it on your own paper or maybe because it's double-sided and you're going to use markers, remember those markers will bleed through or at least ghost on the other side. Most of my markers will, will ghost on the other side of this paper. So you won't be able to color this side of the page if you've colored this wallpaper here with markers. So I know a lot of you like to photocopy and then print out the pages so that you can use both sides. But because it's a 10 by 10 format, I don't know if all scanners are going to let you get it in there and scan the whole amount of this page. So that's one thing to keep in mind. With our coloring books, we do um, eight and a half by 11 standard letter paper here in the US, and then I spiral bind on the top. And just so you know, you can select the kind of paper you want when you come in and order at Coloring Bliss. So this one is on mixed media paper, which has a little bit of tooth so that color pencils will grip onto it, but it's not so toothy that if I do use a marker, it's going to chew up the nibs of the marker. So it's a really good in-between paper. If you don't know exactly what to order at Coloring Bliss, I recommend just go for the, the mixed media to get you started. Now the paper that Joanna Basford has included in her book is very, very smooth. Is it? <laughs> Give it a feel. Oh yeah, that's not. This is a really good texture for um, markers. Really good texture. And the paper itself is quite thick. It's it's not super, super thick, but it's decent thickness. Let me see that one. I got filled. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a decent thickness. But what I have issue with is at the very beginning of her book, she's recommending that you use color pencils. And in my experience, this kind of paper with color pencils is going to be tricky. You're not going to be able to lay 
down a lot of layers because it's so smooth. It will color differently. So I'm not saying don't use color pencils, but it, you're going to have a different experience. And if you really want to get those amazing blends from dark to light or adding, you know, going from purple to yellow or something really crazy like that, it's going to be tricky because this paper is so very smooth. So if it wasn't double-sided, I would recommend markers on this. It would be a perfect paper for alcohol markers. Well, not perfect because it's pretty thin, so it's going to bleed really bad. Yeah, but if it was single-sided, the bleeding wouldn't be so much of an issue. Use a blotting page. Yeah, yeah you just put a page in between, like she said at the beginning, to catch any ink overflow. But because it's double sided and I can't scan it over on my scanner because my scanner is an American scanner, maybe in another country it, they will go 10 inches wide, but our scanners are eight and a half inches wide. Yes, yeah. yeah, mostly. So that's a bit of an issue. So, f like I said, I wish I had gotten the spiral bound so that it would lay flat, and I wish she had picked a different paper or her publishers had picked a different paper for her book. Now, there are options besides scanning. What you can do is take this book down to your local print shop. So wherever that is that they do copies, like in the Kinko's, do, is there still Kinko's around? <laughs> Someplace like that. And they have these big guillotine cutters that can go through really thick paper and large chunks of paper. And what they'll do for you, if you ask them, is they'll slice the entire spine right off for you, nice and close to the glue so that you don't lose very much of the illustrations inside. And then that will make it so that all the pages are loose and you can um, color just one side or you can then again have your print shop do a photocopy for you if they will. They may not because this is a copyrighted book and they don't want you selling or distur distributing, distributing um, copies of her art, which you should not do. You can scan and use your own copy for your own purposes. That's the way this works because you purchase the book you can do that So that's what I would recommend if I was really going to get in and start coloring this I'd go down to my print shop have them slice off that this um, Binding and put it into some sort of book. Maybe I'd have them even they could spiral bind it for you as well So that's kind of what I would lean towards if I was going to try to get through this entire book so cool so having said that, I better at least try some color pencils on here and see how it does perform. The other reason she has you put a blotting page behind every page you work on is because with color pencils, sometimes you push kind of hard and you don't want that indentation to go through to the next page. So blotting pages work great for both alcohol markers and color pencils for different reasons. So let me switch to back to that page with the cute little clothes and I'm going to color a couple of those items and then I'll let let you know how I feel about the paper after I've colored on them. For this first outfit, I decided I wanted to use my Prismacolor Premier pencils because they are so creamy and I'm hoping they will work well with the lack of tooth on this paper. So for her skirt, I used Raspberry PC 1030 and Rosy Beige for PC 1019 to get a nice gradient from dark to light. And then on her shirt, I wanted a cute little blue striped shirt to go with the cute little bow that I created using the same raspberry and rosy beige. So for the blue stripes, I used Indigo Blue PC901, Denim Blue PC1101, and Powder Blue PC1087. So I kept to just a two or a three color blend so that I didn't have a lot of layering to do, which really paid off. Keep those pencils nice and sharp, that will also help. And then at the very end, I decided to bring in one of my very favorite color pencil tools, which is the Caran Dash Full Blender. These are the bright sticks, so it's a full stick full of this blender, colorless blender material. And these Caran d'Ache blender pencils work well with Prismacolors, Polychromos, Crayolas, you name it. You can use it to help smooth out and brighten up those colors. And that helped a lot on this little outfit.
Okay, let's pull out the polychromos and test those and see if an oil-based pencil will work better with this paper. For the second dress, we used three colors from the polychromos line. Do you want to get down? Oh, she's such a good girl. Oh, I love you too. Okay, come on. Oh, I say bye everybody. I'm done being a YouTuber. Bye. <laughs> Back to coloring. I used uh, Red Violet 194, uh, Light Magenta 119, and Crimson 134. Uh, with those three pencils I was able to create some pretty shading on her skirt and up the bodice. And then for fun I wanted to see how gel pens would do on this paper. So I grabbed my Pentel Sparkle Pop Gold Pen and added some details to the triangles of the skirt, the bows, and the stripes up on her bodice. I think it turned out really charming and cute. And now we need to talk about which style of pencil I think would work better with the Joanna Basford book. All right, I'm done coloring two of the dresses, one with a really waxy pencil, the Prismacolors, and one with a really oily pencil, the Polychromos. I think if it were me coloring some more in this book, I would go for the Polychromos. Are you surprised? <laughs> the Prismacolors laid down richer colors like they usually do. Um, with every stroke, you get a lot of color with Prismacolor. But the Polychromos seem to want to slip around and blend a little easier on this slippery paper. So that's what I would recommend. Now the gel pens seem to work just fine. I'm checking the back side. There's no ghosting of the gel pen and it looks pretty good. I did use a blotting page in between just in case and everything seemed to work out just fine with my two little coloring. Now the other little tip I would give you is I took my coloring book here and set it next to this book so that as I open it up, let me see if I can show you right there. This becomes the table so that the spine has room to flex down. And coloring in next to the spine is a pain. For instance, if I was coloring on this page right here, there is a lot of illustration that would be really tricky to color right up against the spine. So cutting the spine off and making these loose free pages I think is a really good idea to eliminate a lot of frustration and stress. So that's my suggestion. Of course you could cut the pages out without going and having the, the spine cut off. That's another option as well. Just use a nice sharp pair of scissors or maybe an X-Acto knife to get right into the spine and cut those pages out. Okay, so we're going to use our polychromos in this book and you can create some pretty blends. It's just a lot trickier because of the slick paper and that's really my only really big critique is that the paper isn't right for how she recommends using this book. And of course I wish it was single-sided printed because I would want to use markers in here and I can't at this point without ruining the page on the other side of the marker. So I really am glad that I purchased this book. I may, when I'm tired and I just want a little something to color, come in and color more of these little images like I did today because that was a nice relaxing quick 10 minutes of coloring and I have something cute to show for it. So that's probably how in the future I will use this book. So I recommend that you follow the link in the video description and go check out how much the book is for sale right now. And I want to say congratulations to Joanna Basford for another beautiful piece of artwork here that she has created for all of us colorists. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you learned a lot about other coloring books. And like I said earlier in the video, come and check out the Bliss Print Shop. We can print books in a lot of different ways and on a lot of different papers. And I have hundreds of pieces of art waiting for you to pick from for your coloring book. So come and check that out. And thanks again, everyone for watching. And I hope you have a wonderful, colorful, blissful day. Bye everyone.